Hello, everyone, and happy Friday. I'm Jesse McLean, the Director of Education at the Center for Coastal Studies, and this is Facebook Live, uh, Cool Marine Animals I Have Seen, Friday edition. Um, before we get to, um, and this week's theme is just one look, before we get to the animal of today, I just wanted to mention something exciting that, that Center researchers discovered just the other day that if you don't already know, which I guess most of you do, um, since our Facebook numbers have been overwhelming, is that um, our aerial uh, research team spotted a blue whale swimming about 13 miles or roughly 18 kilometers off the coast of Truro and Cape Cod the other day, uh, swimming with the fin whale, which is very exciting. Um, they missed it by a week for my blue whale talk. Last week was my blue whale talk. Um, I'll see if I can get that reposted in light of the news. Um, but today we're going to talk about, uh, keeping with a theme of just one look, uh, we're going to talk about a little known cetacean, um, one that I was fortunate enough to be able to see just one time a pod um, very briefly swimming off the coast of uh, the South Island in New Zealand. Um, and it's a dolphin that um, I actually knew a little bit about because it was my favorite um, animal one of my favorite cetaceans, one of my favorite animals from about the time I was 10, because I thought it was the coolest looking thing in the world. Um, it's very beautiful. Um, so I'm very fortunate that I was able to get uh, at least a, uh, a, a brief glimpse of this. Um, if not a picture, I didn't get a picture. Um, and it's, it's so little known that even whale naturalists that I know, um, some of them have never heard of it. So uh, today we're going to talk about that. Um, it's what I consider to be the most striking dolphin species out there. Uh, it's very unique in how it looks. Um, and it is the southern right whale dolphin. So let's bring in our, our presentation. So what dolphin do you say? Um, the southern right whale dolphin is a unique species. Um, it's a member of the, the dolphin family. It's a odontocete. It's a toothed whale. And as I mentioned, it's one of the least known species uh, of dolphins in uh, the world. Uh, it inhabits the Southern Ocean. It's a Southern species. <clears throat> and interestingly, has a Northern counterpart that lives in the Northern Hemisphere in the Pacific. Um, looks almost identical, except that it's all black. So um, Southern right whale dolphins um, range between 30 degrees and 65 degrees south as you can see here from this map, in cool, temperate, and sub-Antarctic waters. It's an ocean-going uh, oceanic species uh, coming only close to shore in deep water coastal areas. Um, like the one I saw it all was in the South Island of New Zealand in a place called Kaikoura, where the, um, there's a canyon just offshore that goes down to 800 meters or even tw uh, the, drop, the deepest point to 1,200 meters deep to over 3,000 feet. Uh, but most sightings of this species occur offshore and in deep waters in temperatures that range between one degree Celsius and, and 20 degrees, um, which is of 33 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, they do sometimes approach coastal areas uh, with deep water and upwelling areas. That's where rich nutrients get brought to the surface, bringing up a whole mess of other uh, food source. So it is a striking dolphin, as you see, see here. Um, it's, it's very poorly known, um, but is very distinctive. It has a northern cousin, um, and um, the northern cousin looks just like this, except it is all black. Um, both of these species of dolphins lack dorsal fins. Um, and they're named after right whales, which also lack dorsal fins. Um, the, there's another porpoise species, aptly named the finless porpoise, which is another finless cetacean. Um, and the narwhal has lacks a dorsal fin, but uh, has kind of a little uh, notch at the top um, of its back. But most species of dolphins uh, have dorsal fins. These two uh, lack and are quite um, um, quite characteristic. Um, you know, nothing you cannot distinguish between, or I should say that these are very distinguishable if you see them in the water. Um, they are uh, poorly known. Uh, they grow up to an estimated three meters uh, or 9.8 feet and weigh up to 116 
kilograms or 250 uh, pounds. Um, they have short curved flippers, small tail flukes, and short, well-defined beaks. Um, there is um, some variability in the size of the black and white areas of their skin exists. You can see here this image. Um, the one dolphin has more white. Um, and the other dolphin has more black on the top. Um, and in some cases, there have been animals, all white animals that have been found and all black animals that have been found of this species. Uh, Southern right whale dolphins are gregarious and have been documented in pods ranging from four to more than a thousand individuals. I would say that the pod that I saw was probably a couple hundred. Uh, they are commonly associated with other cetaceans, especially with dusky, uh, and hourglass dolphins, two other beautiful species of dolphins. If you don't know what they are, we definitely look them up. And sometimes long fin pilot whales. Uh, they are active, energetic swimmers, often coming out of the water in low angle leaps. Um, they've been recorded swimming up to 14 kilometers, or sorry, 22 kilometers or 14 miles per hour. Curiously, there was a case um, in off the coast of Argentina. Uh, that was documented in the early in the year 2000 of a possible hybrid between a southern right whale dolphin and a dusky dolphin, um, which is quite interesting considering that these species uh, do hang around each other a lot. There was possibly interbreeding. And we know that there are hybrid, um, um, recently a paper came out showing a hybrid blue and fin whale. Um, I believe it was a, a, a female. Uh, blue whale mated with a um, male fin whale and um, created a hybrid species. Interestingly, uh, the blue whale that was seen by our aerial team was swimming with the fin whale. So um, we know that this happens in other species of cetaceans. Um, so it's possible that um, these species intermix uh, the, the southern right whale dolphin and the dusky dolphin. Um, southern right whale dolphins uh, prey on an undetermined range of fish. Um, but it's suggested they mostly play, play on squid um, and mesopelagic fish, which are fish that are found between 200 and 1,000 meters. Um, they can dive down to depths of 200 meters uh, over 660 feet uh, and uh, some depth, um, not for very long times. They've been recorded diving down to about six and a half minutes. There's not much known about the uh, species reproductive biology. Again, these are very little known uh, dolphins. And I feel after reading more about them, very fortunate that I was actually able to see them. Um, there appears to be a calving peak in winter to early spring. Um, length of the calves born is unknown, but, it, but it's approximated at 34 inches or 86 centimeters and weighs about five kilos or 11 pounds. And young animals tend to have muted uh, colors of dark gray and light gray. So they don't have the, the bright colors of their, their um, the adults, white and, and black. The population size of these, these animals doesn't really exist. Um, they are um, sometimes caught for food um, and for bait in the crab fishery in Peru and Chile. Um, not sure that one thing that people are aware of, um, while well, here in the US, um, harming cetaceans is illegal. Um, and as it is in many other countries, dolphins, particularly in South America, are still um, hunted uh, for both for meat and for uh, bait, um, in this case for crab fishery, but in many cases in South America for fisheries for sharks uh, to actually catch the sharks and sell the fins. Um, a, a report looked at uh, fishery in Peru and found that 15,000 dolphins, not this species specifically, but Dolphins in general um, were killed every year illegally in Peru. Dolphins are protected uh, as bait to use in shark fisheries. Um, so these animals still face threats around the world. They are susceptible to bycatch, particularly in the swordfish um, gillnet industry off the coast of Chile. Um, but again, little is known about the numbers of these species. Um, and of course, climate change uh, is a growing threat to all species in, in the oceans. Um, throughout their range, uh, the seals, seas are warming, uh, which could uh, bring uh, eventually reduced habitat and, of course, uh, shift the range of many of their prey species as well as abundance. So it's yet to be, uh, remains 
um, what effects climate change might have on these species, but of course climate change is affecting species, particularly in our oceans all around the world. So that's it today. Um, I just want to end with this picture. Um, this is a comforter that I had that I slept under for many, many years. If um, Again, I, these were the coolest animals I thought, um, and this was a comforter, comforter that I had to dig out deep in a closet to find, um, but I slept under this comforter for many, many years. Um, they're amazingly beautiful animals, super cool, and, um, and I feel fortunate that I was able to get just one look. Of course, I want to, just like all the animals I've talked about this week, I want to have more than just one look. So that's all for today. Um, I decided um, I was going to um, uh, next week do a uh, series of uh, the top five spots to see marine wildlife that I've seen. Um, but I will continue with cool marine animals uh, for one more week. Um, so next week I will be back at 11. So please join me for cool marine animals that I have seen. No particular theme for next week, just kind of random animals that I have seen. Uh, so join me again. Thank you.